Hi, this is David Harper of Bonac Turtle with a quick review of portfolio volatility under the mean variance framework for FRM candidates. This is from Stolls, and this is very classic traditional finance that has been taught for many years. And the idea is we want to look at portfolio volatility down here at the bottom. And to keep things simple, we assume our portfolio only contains two assets, asset A and asset B. The math here, the portfolio math, can be easily extended to multiple assets with matrix notation, but we don't need to bother with that now. Right now, we assume that asset A occupies a 50% weight of the portfolio, so that's an input assumption. We have a 50% position in asset A because there's only two assets. That means asset B has one minus 50% or a 50% position as well. When we say mean variance, we mean those are the properties we're interested, only those first two moments, mean and variance. Well, the mean is the expected return of the asset. And here's the variance, which is just the square of the volatility or standard deviation. So we can use either as an input assumption, either the standard deviation slash volatility or the variance, which is its square. Notice I do not have the variance in units, but I do have the standard deviation expressed in percentage. So for asset A, I'll assume as an input a 14% expected return with a volatility or standard deviation of 20%. That means the variance is the volatility squared. Asset B is a lower risk, lower return type of asset. Its expected return is only 4% and its standard deviation is only 10%. So similarly, I can solve for the variance. So the only other input we need for this two asset portfolio volatility is the correlation between the two asset returns, denoted typically by Greek rho, and I'm going to use 20%. This is very important for FRM candidates. We absolutely need to know this. I could also take the covariance as an input. The correlation and the covariance are both measures of co-movement. And in fact, it's the covariance that's really the primary metric. But it's not in units that are instantly familiar or intuitive to us. So remember, we convert the covariance into correlation or we standardize it into correlation and make it unitless. So it's between negative 1 and 1. So I have that formula down here. We absolutely need to know that. The covariance is equal to the product of the correlation multiplied by the volatility of each of the assets. This can also be rearranged to express here Greek rho, the correlation, as a function of the covariance divided by the product of the volatility. So that's why I say really correlation is really a covariance that has been standardized by way of this division. So this Equality and truism right here is absolutely key to us and means that we can either take the covariance or the correlation as an input. So I'm going to use the 20% correlation because it's more intuitive to us, humanly, and that means our covariance, we know, is the product of the correlation, the volatility or slash standard deviation of the first asset, multiplied by the volatility of the second asset. In this case, 0 0.004. Now we have all we need to calculate the portfolio variance. And here's that formula again in light green right here. Sigma squared indicates, denotes the portfolio variance. So this is a portfolio variance consisting of the combination of the two assets, A plus B. That portfolio variance equals the weight in the first asset squared multiplied by the variance. Similarly, we do the same thing for the other asset, weight squared times variance of asset B, and then a term that accounts for these benefits of diversification, two times the weight of A times the weight of B times the covariance. Notice I've got a second version here. It's the same exact formula. All we did is that substitution here. We can substitute the covariance with the product of correlation times volatility times volatility. So that's the formula for two asset portfolio variance. We can use a matrix notation to express this and it turns out to be exactly the same thing. When we go to more assets, it's more convenient to use portfolios, but here it is ex expanded for the two asset portfolio. And that means I can come down here and construct this portfolio variance because I go equals, now I'm building the function, equals the weight of the first asset, 
Remember, I need to square that. Let's not forget to do that. I want to multiply that by the variance of the first asset. So I could take this standard deviation and square it, or I could just pull the variance directly. I'm going to add the weight of the second asset and square it, multiply by the variance of the second asset, and then I'm going to add that term that accounts for their correlation. 2 multiplied by the weight of the first asset, the weight of the second asset, multiplied by, now I'm almost finished, I could just plug in, I can do two things here. I can plug in the covariance, or why don't I just do it the long way? Correlation multiplied by volatility of the first multiplied by volatility of the second. And so then I've implemented that formula and I get 0 0.0145. That's the portfolio variance, not, a, not as intuitive to us, or maybe not at all. So remember, we want to remember at the end to take the square root of that. Let me start that again, square root of that portfolio variance to get the portfolio volatility. And now on the right, I've got a graph that just illustrates the impact of the correlation on the portfolio volatility. The portfolio volatility is on the x-axis here. So for example, if I just make the correlation 100%, at 100% where the assets are equally weighted, one asset has a volatility of 20 and the other has a volatility of 10, my portfolio is going to be right in the middle, and that's because at 100% correlation, I'm really tracking with this blue line here that is straight line. It's the only straight line here. They're perfectly correlated, so we're not really getting any benefit for diversification. And at 50-50, my standard deviation is going to be right here at 15%. It's imperfect correlation that gives us the benefits of diversification. Imperfect correlation is anything less than one. So, for example, as I move this to, let's say, 75% correlation, notice my portfolio volatility declines. And I go to 50%, and I have a lower portfolio volatility. That actually tracks with the purple line, and we start to see the curvature. And I'm here somewhere at 13%. Going down to 0% correlation, they are independent of each other, and my portfolio tracks with the green line, and the standard deviation here is at about 11%. And then, then I can start to introduce negative correlation, and we might say then that one of the assets is hedging the other asset or vice versa, and the extreme correlation at negative 100 actually gives us this direct line here that bends all the way back to virtually the y-axis, and our volatility is pretty close to zero. When one asset is a perfect hedge, you answer another, or almost a perfect hedge. So I hope this was a helpful introduction. You can get this spreadsheet uploaded at the website. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.